What is up everybody out there in YouTube land? Welcome back to another video. It's Purple DC back with another knife review. This time we have something from Horizon Outdoor Tools. Now, some of you may or may not know, this knife was made by the maker that many of you know as Andy. Andy makes a lot of clones of Microtech knives. He's got his Bat Knives brand that does like the pallet out the front. And uh, the other thing that he does is now he's making bearing flippers. And that is what we have here. This is Andy's AD06 model. What we have is a knife with a roughly about a five, five inch handle, four inch blade of S35VN with a very high satin polish that is actually really cool looking. I mean, it's satin, it's like almost like a half satin, half mirrored look. And then the flats are done in a stone wash. Horizon Outdoor Tool branding on the blade. TC4 titanium handles, this one, this particular model being in a raw milled finish. There is no anodizing or coating. Textured milling on the 3D machine clip. Now, I would say there's a titanium backspacer, but that's not really a backspacer. That is not really a pin. And this does not have a traditional pivot. This knife is really unique in the sense that it's a, a, kind of a half of an integral. Um, anybody who's seen like a uh, Riati Horizon A, the backspacer is actually part of one half of the handle. And the pivot on this knife is actually machined out of the titanium slab. Inside the titanium pivot are two hardened steel washers that actually have a bearing race in them. They're not flat like most of them, so the bearings are supported all the way around. Again, the actual pivot itself is part of the titanium. There's a circular channel milled out for the bearings and after that channel is milled out you're left with the pivot in the center. Hardened steel lock bar insert. On the inside both halves of the handle have been machined out to lighten the weight. So what you get is a knife that has great flipping action because the pivot does not wiggle at all and does not cannot shift on its axis you have pretty much perfect blade centering even with a very very narrow channel for that blade to fit in I mean if this blade was off center any amount you'd be rubbing on the handles but it does not rub it looks very close but it does not touch We do have a traditional steel stop pin, which is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Good retention on the pocket clip. Uh, Andy did some Microtech like uh, tri wing hardware, like um, he does on his clones. I am not sure if this pivot surround is titanium or if it is steel that has a coating on it but it's a pretty cool accent it's a washer that the screw fits into flipping action on this is very very good it's one of those flippers that has a nice snappy detent it does it's not I mean you're not going to be able to get that to fail um, just a really really good detent 
the feel in the hand is actually really nice. To be perfectly honest, when I first saw this knife, I w I'm not, and I'm still not, I'm not crazy about the design, but any of you guys who know me know that my job, in my opinion, is not to give you my opinion on aesthetics. My job is to present the knife to you in the most honest way possible and let you guys make the choice of whether or not it is a knife for you. I'm not really a fan of when reviewers sit there and go, oh, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, and it's really just personal opinion. It doesn't mean that it's a bad knife, it just means that person doesn't particularly care for it. But... I'm not the one that's going to go out and buy this knife. Somebody out there, one of you guys, is going to. So who cares what I personally do and do not like? Overall, I've been following Andy's work, and many of you guys have seen my videos. The only reason why I took some of Andy's videos down is because certain models just aren't made anymore, and so it makes no sense for me to have the reviews up um, when you can't buy them, and finding them on the used market is nearly impossible. I mean, there's no place to even find them used because forums don't allow it to sale, eBay doesn't allow it, Amazon doesn't allow it, it's... It's useless. So once the videos became obsolete, I took them down. But this is something that pretty much anybody can buy. And overall, I think the construction and the quality of the milling and everything like that is very good. Um, I personally would prefer a tumbled finish so that some of these edges and some of the you know some of the milling marks are would be kind of massaged and so it would look more professional but having it be in this raw titanium is a benefit to anybody who's going to want to do some aftermarket anodization or somebody must just really like the raw look if you do like it 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 really does what it does well bearings are ceramic um, as far as the action goes on the closing, it's not going to free fall on you, but it's definitely smooth and fast. Um, you don't have to worry about losing a finger, but um, anybody who's a fan of snappy detents and good flipping action, I don't think anybody would have a problem with the way this knife operates. Um, this knife is sold on AliExpress and DHgate by a couple of different sellers, but um, I'm going to do a direct link to the person, Andy, who supplied me with this knife. And uh, that way, if you want to check it out, you can buy it directly from them. And it costs roughly $140. I believe it's $137 shipped to your door. Discounts for buying multiples, as usual. I really do like the way he did that blade grind. Uh, the satin finish on this is really, really well done on it. And because he chose to upgrade the steel, there is none of those horizontal alloy banding lines that you would get down the length of the blade, like when he uses uh, D2. This looks a lot cleaner. It's, it just really, really looks sharp. P pun fully intended. Well, not really, but uh, it works. One of the things that Andy used to struggle with was getting his knives sharp. No longer an issue. Uh, this thing will shave, guaranteed. Overall, fit and finish is excellent. Flipping action, again, excellent. Pocket clip retention, very good. I mean, the only thing to fault this knife on is if you just aren't a fan of the styling. If you're a fan of the styling, I really don't think you can go wrong. And it really is something different. You know, you don't see a lot of knives like this where from the presentation side, 
There's no screws at all. Not even a sign of a pivot. Some makers do that, but it is not common. And I do like the way he machined this out, so if you want to put a lanyard on there, you don't have to tie it. You can unbolt it, separate it, put the loop over it, and uh, you don't have to have that knot at the butt end of your knife. I really get bothered by that look. Um, I'm sorry, because normally I try and give you guys the, the, the benefits and the negatives of a knife. Um, but in this particular instance, the only, like I said, the only thing that I can really fault it on are things that are just my personal preference, which is, which I don't even need to go into because that's not, you're not me. So, you know, if I don't like something, that does not mean that you have to not like it as well. I do like that little swedge that he did up at the top. Um, it kind of reminds me like the way that this blade was ground, you know, with the, uh, that type of an angular plunge grind and then this angular swedge kind of reminds me of a sheer gore off type, uh, grind. The handle, not so much. I really don't know of many makers that are doing this type of a handle style. And as much as I'm not really a fan of the look, the feel is really, really good. I like it because it's got chamfered edges, and they're not really round, but you feel this knife in your hand, and I have seen knives that I think look better, but I haven't really had many knives that feel this good. It's not going to rotate on you, but it also doesn't have any hot spots. It looks angular, but it doesn't feel that way in the hand, and this rough you know, milled texture gives you a lot of grip. So what I'm kind of looking at this knife as is a completely utilitarian EDC knife. You've got that almost a full flat grind. I don't know what kind of grind they would call that. Is it a saber grind? I'm not sure because I don't, I don't really get into grinds. My favorite is always a hollow grind. But this would be a nice slicing blade. It's feels very thin behind the edge and it doesn't get extremely thick thick enough to where you you can rely on it but not so thick that you're questioning the sanity of the maker but yeah the feel of that is really really nice in the hand very solid lockup no side to side or horizontal no horizontal or vertical play Uh, another thing with the lock bar is I like he put a very generous ramp here so it's comfortable unlocking it. It's on a perfect angle. There's no hot spot there with unlocking the knife. Overall, um, I'm really impressed with how far he has come with his, his machining. And um, while this does have a raw look, it's intentional. He makes this knife in a couple of different colors, and this is the raw version. Again, great for aftermarket anodizing. I mean, if you want to do colors on this, I mean, this is, you don't even probably have to etch this. I would just clean it with some Windex, and uh, you're good to go as far as anodizing it. Another cool thing is that Andy gives you the three pin wrench to do all the adjustments and there's a nice big generous hole back here for if you want to put like an allen key in there and give yourself some extra leverage there's even a flat spot on it so like if you drop your tool it's gonna stop it's not gonna roll off of your bench and go somewhere it's just gonna sit just like that because there are times, trust me, where I've gone to work on a knife and I'm changing bits and I set a bit down and it does a roll like that, but then it just keeps rolling, falls on the floor, and then I'm freaking out, bending down to get it. Then I'm hitting the table, parts are going everywhere, it's a catastrophe. But it's I always love it. If you're going to do proprietary hardware, do it right like Andy does and include the tool. Uh, the box... 
I mean, you know I'm not crazy on boxes, but it is nice form-fitting uh, closed cell foam. You've got an area for the tool. I'm not sure what this is really for, but maybe this is a universal box for a couple of different models. I'm not sure. Horizon Outdoor logo on the front. Nothing on the back. It's a nice box. Reminds me of the old Microtech boxes from when they were from Vero Beach. But yeah, really nice offering from Andy. I'm really, really wanting to check out his new out the fronts. Andy has got some uh, titanium handled uh, Ultratech clones, and he has titanium versions of the Paladin that haven't gone on sale, but I think he's experimenting with it. And there's one that I really, really want to review, and it's a double-edged TC4 Titanium Paladin that's a du the dagger grind. I want to review that knife so bad. Um, we'll see if I can get that on the channel at some point in the future. But this, again, has been the Andy Made Horizons Outdoor Tools AD06. You can get it on DHgate or AliExpress. I'll have a link down below. $137 shipped to your door. If you like the style, I highly recommend it. Thanks again for checking out the channel. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I don't care if you like the video to like it. Like You don't have to hit like. You don't have to hit subscribe. I'm just honored that you guys watched to this point. So if you'd like to... Ha um, know anything else about the knife if I didn't touch on it. Uh, sorry, specs on this are uh, about a 4 inch blade, 5 inch handle, TC4 again for the ha uh, titanium for the handle, S35 VN blade. If you have any other questions about it, leave a comment or a question down below. I will answer anything that I have the ability to answer and as usual if I don't have the answer I will do my best to get you one. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next video.